indeed. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. It's good to uh, be with you this morning. Good morning, Les. How you doing? Have you had a good week? Awesome. That's good to hear. I hope you've had a good week, too. Uh, it's been... Um, it has been, of course, another uh, challenging, trying week in, in our nation, but today we're going to talk about uh, something that's a little different, certainly relevant, um, but from a, a different angle, if you will, um, than maybe what we've been all kind of consumed with and thinking about uh, for the last few weeks. And um, so I want to begin with just a couple of announcements, and uh, one, I'm glad that you're here this morning, wherever you might be. Today is Communion Sunday. We're going to be gathering around the table here a little bit later in our service, so uh, as you prepare to, to worship today, make sure you bring some uh, bread and juice, some bread and grape juice or orange juice or apple juice, some bread and water, crackers and water, whatever it is that you might have uh, for you to participate in the Lord's Supper later in the service. On Tuesday of this week, uh, we will at 5.30 p.m. Uh, here at the church be gathering to, um, to remember the lives lost to COVID in this pandemic. Um, by Tuesday, it is probable that we will have reached 400,000 Americans who have died from the pandemic. Uh, here in Chesterfield County, as of yesterday, 193 people have died due to COVID. And so on, at 5.30 on Tuesday evening, we will gather here. If the weather permits, we'll gather outside. Uh, and we're going to ring bells in honor and memory of all of those here in Chesterfield who have died. Uh, offer up some prayers of grief and mourning and for healing. Uh, and so we'll be doing that on Facebook. So you'll be able to, to join that as well. So just want to make you aware of that. Um, here's the main thing for the day. The thing I want you more than anything, I think, to, to come away with. If we're not looking for God, if we're not expecting to encounter Christ, the odds are pretty good that we won't. And so we gather for worship. We get up in the morning and remember our baptism. We go about our, our daily chores and daily work and tasks with a sense of expectation. That in that day, throughout the day, we will encounter Christ, the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing that's, um, I think, really significant, especially on this Communion Sunday. Uh, as we hear the stories from Scripture, God is relentless in pursuit of us. God will not give up on us. And that's the main thing. I want you to remember today, because God loves you so much, God will not give up on you. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might hear your word speak to us in this moment. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through song and scripture. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might understand your promises to followers both old and young, ancient and modern, open our hearts, O oh God, that we might enter into the love you offer us. Amen. That's a prayer from Laura Bartlett. Friends, wherever you are on your feet this morning, we're going to sing a couple of songs, Everything Glorious and the Summons.
Um, this morning as we prepare to hear uh, the scriptures read, Rachel Z is going to come and read our scripture for us this morning and uh, hear the word proclaimed. Uh, let us pause for prayer. Holy God, put your spirit upon us this morning that we will hear what you want us to hear, that we will see what you want us to see. Move us, shake us, inspire us, and open us 
And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O holy God. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 46. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, Philip was from Bethesda, the home of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. <laughs> Come and see. Come and see for yourself. So, Rachel, I have a question for you. Uh, a little come and see, a little show and tell. Uh, this glass of blue water, finish this sentence for me. This glass of water is half... It's half full, Alan. <laughs> thank you, Rachel, and thank you for your reading this morning. Nathaniel would have said, yes, Rachel, it is half full, but it's also half empty. Nathaniel was a but kind of guy. We might even say that Nathaniel in the scripture, um, Nathaniel was but. And um, if you had told Nathaniel that um, he had won the lottery and Nathaniel's response would have been, but now I have to pay taxes. If you had invited Nathaniel to dinner and said, I'm going to fix you your favorite meal, he would have been grateful and then he would have said, but it doesn't taste like the way my mama made it. If you had told Nathaniel that it was a beautiful day outside, the temperatures are nice, it's sunny and bright, there's not a cloud in the sky, Nathaniel would have responded, but I have to be in Zoom meetings inside all day long. Nathaniel's, um, Nathaniel's take on the world, his view of the world uh, was tarnished. He was cynical, and he used his sarcasm, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He used his sarcasm to kind of keep people and that positivity uh, that people brought to him, keep them at arm's length. This is who Nathaniel was. And it could be for good reason. Um, Nathaniel, um, Nathaniel in the first century was living in Judea. That was an occupied nation. The Romans occupied uh, the country. Uh, Nathaniel, as a Jew, had been waiting for, oh, I don't know, a thousand years for the Messiah to come, and still he hadn't come. Uh, maybe Nathaniel was just having a bad day that day when Philip came to him. Maybe Nathaniel hadn't worked in a while, or uh, he was just grumpy. Uh, who knows what his reason was and what his motivation was. But Nathaniel's cynicism speaks out in this passage. Nathaniel was a butt. There's a second story that accompanies this this week, this passage this week. And it's a story about Eli and Samuel. And the, the, the story is such that um, I've wrestled all week with that story because that was the one I really wanted to uh, focus on this week. But it took me until last night to realize that um, the story wasn't really for me to share with you as a part of this message. The story was for me to hear that, um, that what I was drawing attention to and what I was focused on wasn't what God was leading me to bring to you today. My task as a preacher, as I was taught in seminary, is to come from the congregation to bring a word from God to the congregation. Um, and at different times in my, uh, in my very short ministerial life, uh, I have started out uh, in the congregation at the beginning of a service and, and have come from a seat on a pew or a seat in a chair uh, to occupy the pulpit, trying to remind myself and to remember that that's, that's where I come from. That is my calling. In this story from uh, 1 Samuel, uh, it's really profound. The beginning is profound, and I'm going to try to stay away from the rest of it because it's a, it's a good sermon for another day. But at the beginning of it is really profound. It comes at a time in which uh, the, the book of Judges, second, uh, the book of Judges has ended, uh, the prelude before the story of Ruth, uh, ends with, in those days, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. In those days, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. 
And then the story picks up at the begin, very beginning of chapter 3 in 1 Samuel with in those days, in the days of Elon and Samuel, in those days the word of the Lord was rare and visions were far and few between. And Elah, the priest who cared for God's temple at Shiloh, had grown blind. The word of the Lord was rare, and God's priest had become blind. I thought about that a lot this week in the context of the story of Nathaniel, and wondering if he too was like Eli, that the God's word had become rare for Nathaniel, such that he had become disillusioned and despairing and had lost hope, that uh, he was becoming so frustrated that, that his uh, cynicism and his, and his anger at times just kind of um, jumped out at Philip and others. How if we're not tuned in to God's word speaking in our lives, then there are the consequences for that. There are repercussions for that. We become blind to what God is trying to maybe say to us or over time we begin to become so distant from God because we are not hearing God's word, we're not listening to God's word that we can't find our way back to God's word such that even when God is speaking to us, we may not hear it. That's what happens to young Samuel. He doesn't recognize God's voice yet because he's young. Eli the old priest had forgotten what God's voice sounded like. Nathaniel, maybe, had never heard the voice of God. I've thought about this week about um, Philip. Philip is, um, as the beginning of this passage that Rachel just read to us, Philip is the third uh, disciple that Jesus calls in John's Gospel. Uh, on the first day, he, um, he's walking down the beach, and Peter and Andrew begin to follow along behind him, and uh, they want to know where he's going, and he says to them, come and see, and they do. The next day, which is where this story picks up, the next day it's Philip who crossed paths with Jesus, and he, uh, Philip being a friend of Simon and uh, Andrew's, Jesus invites Philip to come and see. And Philip immediately goes and tells Nathaniel, his, his compatriot, we have found the Messiah. We've found the one that we've been looking for. And Nathaniel, in his cynicism, is dismissive. He's not receptive. He's not open to it. He's, he's, not, he's not listening and seeing what's beginning to happen in his midst. But yet Philip persists. And Philip invites him with the same words that Jesus called Philip. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Come and see. Meet this man from Nazareth. Jesus calls out to Philip, calls out to Nathaniel as Nathaniel arrives uh, where Jesus says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? And Jesus said, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Here is one in whom there is no deceit. See, where we see and listen to Nathaniel's word of, of sarcasm and, and hear cynicism and frustration and, and anger, Jesus sees one who is candid, who's authentic, who speaks his mind. Jesus sees in Nathaniel where he is in that moment, and he sees that, yes, he sees that, and he also sees who Nathaniel is can be. Jesus sees us in that way too, my friends. 
in this season of life when there's death all around us and um, political turmoil and economic distress for so many in our country, Jesus sees us in our frustration, in our disappointment, in our grief, in our anger. Jesus sees us in our days in which we feel overwhelmed and hopeless and despairing. Jesus sees us in these times in which we struggle and don't want to get out of bed in the morning. Jesus sees all of this. And Jesus sees what we can be if we turn our attention back to God's Word. I'm not much of a hellfire and brimstone kind of preacher. The closest I would, um, would say I come to preaching hellfire and brimstone is um, when I preach a sermon about taking the book of Revelation back from the likes of folks like Tim LaHaye. But there's something to be said for us Christians first, but all people to begin to turn our attention back to God's Word, to actually listening to and hearing what God is saying to us in this day. I wonder sometimes for my own sake, because this idea of not listening to God's Word or, or not being able to hear God's Word, much like old Eli, uh, and so growing blind from it, I've been there and I have done that, and I claim it and I own it. And I wonder some days even now that uh, with everything that's happening in our world, if we spent as much time in the scriptures as we spend in social media, what our lives might be like. If our scripture came less from little memes on Facebook and more from the gospel of John, like this morning, if we might get a better understanding of what God is saying to us. If we turn away from tweets about what the Scripture says and actually read it ourselves and listen to it. If we spend as much time every day in Scripture as we do looking at what other folks had for dinner last night or where they went on their vacation last month, I wonder what kind of world we would live in. If we began to read and see and understand for ourselves more than five minutes a day or more than 15 minutes or 60 minutes in a week, what it is that Jesus is really saying to us and the life that he's calling us to and the reminder, this, this outpouring of grace that we hear in this story, in this story, that I see you where you are. And I also see who you can be. And in fact, what Jesus would probably say to us today is, I see you where you will be. When he's talking to Nathaniel in the presence of Nathaniel and Philip, Jesus goes on to say, Nathaniel says to him, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Something about that encounter with Jesus, that simple encounter with Jesus, that Philip invited him to come and see for himself, and, and Jesus says about him, here is one who has no deceit. And I saw you under the fig tree before Philip came to you. And that just penetrates Nathaniel's spirit. And he says, you really are God's son, aren't you, Rabbi? And Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the Son of Man. We hear this and we immediately begin to think about all of those miracles and miraculous things that Jesus did. We think about the feeding of the 5,000 and walking on the water. We think about the resurrection. We recall and remember the feeding of the 5,000 and uh, the, the healings that took place all over greater Israel. We think about Jesus healing 
the man who was born blind because that had never been done before. But I think Jesus is talking to Nathaniel. And by virtue of talking to Nathaniel, he's also speaking to us this morning, friends. He's not just talking about the things that Nathaniel will witness that Jesus will do and that God will do through him. He's pointing out to Nathaniel that if you hang with me, if you hang with me, you will see in yourself wonderful things, glorious things that you can't even begin to imagine. Friends, in weeks like we've been going through, week after week here recently, and that the week that we look ahead of us and um, the, the anxiety that surrounds um, the inauguration, I choose this morning, and I invite you to choose this alongside me, I choose this morning to hear this message of hope. That if we hang with Jesus, that we will see wonderful things ahead. Not in the next life, in this life. If we hang with Jesus and listen to his word and seriously listen to it and take it to heart, that our eyes will be open to the power and the presence of God in our daily lives. That we won't be blind and old but we'll be refreshed and renewed and be able to, to see where God is leading us in this season. That God will show us and reveal to us our full potential to be disciples of Jesus, to invite others to come and see because we've seen it for ourselves and we want to share that good news with others. In the story of Eli and Samuel, after a very sleepless night, I don't know if you, any of you are having sleepless nights here recently. I have them from time to time. After a very sleepless night in which God is trying to get Samuel's attention and Eli's attention, Samuel uh, Eli finally, the old priest Eli finally remembers what, when God speaks, what that sounds like. And he knows that God is not speaking to him. And he has the wisdom to say to Samuel, now go back and listen. And when you hear the voice again, invite it. Invite it, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God begins to talk to Samuel. God begins to share God's word and God's vision with Samuel, who then shares it with the nation of Israel. Friends, we need God's word. We need the teachings of Jesus maybe now more than any time in our lives. And my hope and my prayer today is that we will embrace the invitation to go and see for ourselves what it is that Christ sees in us. Are we living into our best potential filled with God's grace? Are we answering God's call, God's summons on our lives to spread good news to others? Are we accepting and receiving the love and the, the grace of God into our lives that offers us forgiveness and hope and encouragement? Will we begin to see if we spend time listening to the teachings and the word of Christ, will we begin to see, hmm, will we see what God sees in us? Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you this morning 
hungry, hungry for that word. We come to you this morning, God, desiring you to open our eyes so that we are not walking blind. That you will free us from our oppression. That you will release the chains and the bonds of imprisonment from us. That we can be and will be the person and persons that you see in us. That you call us to be. That you are equipping us to be. God, we thank you for loving us so abundantly and not giving up on us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Another, 
all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's been let down, all the lost you have been found, to anyone labeled right or wrong, to everyone who hears his song. He said, come to the day. That's our invitation, friends, to prepare to come to the table. If you've not already done so, this would be, this would be a really good time to get that uh, grape juice or uh, whatever you're using this morning, um, um, orange juice, water, whatever it might be, your version of bread as we come to the table. This morning our table is abundantly adorned with the bread of life. Uh, and fruit uh, as well, fruit that not only uh, decorates our table, but is used to feed the hungry here in our community, and we give thanks for the abundance. Christ our Lord invites to this his table. <laughs> this is his table. And Christ our Lord invites to this his table all who love him and all who want to. All who seek to live in peace with God and with one another, all who want to be at peace with themselves. Friends, as we come to the table today, let us prepare our hearts with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not listened to your call. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news this morning. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, there was, um, there was a moment in, that the scriptures tell us in which Jesus and his disciples had gathered for their last meal. They were in Jerusalem and they had come to Jerusalem to celebrate their story, to remember their story as a people. How God had heard their cries when they were oppressed and in bondage, when they were enslaved. How God had heard their cries and had sent Moses and Aaron to draw them out of Egypt. How God had led them out of Egypt and through the waters of the Red Sea. Those baptismal waters of the Red Sea. And as they went to the desert and wandered towards their promised land, God had fed them with manna from heaven, fields of quail, and quenched their thirst with 
water from a rock. The disciples gathered to remember their story with Jesus. And as they did so, they shared in a meal together. And yet it was in the midst of that meal that Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, whenever you eat of this bread, I want you to remember me. And whenever you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, friends, we gather today, disciples of Jesus, to do just as he asked us to do, to remember him when we share in the bread and the cup. Join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning you breathed the breath of life upon all your creation, and it was so very good. You watered the earth that humans might have food and drink. You gave to your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey, wine to replenish their spirits. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food and water in their wilderness. And you gave Jesus his daily bread to share with the blind, the hard-hearted, the disobedient, and those he calls to follow them for their life's journey. And here at your table, you offer us bread and wine for our journey to nourish us as sons and daughters. And so with all our sisters and brothers before us and beside us, we praise you from our hearts for your unending greatness. Holy God, present with us now as we do in this place what your son Jesus did in an upstairs room. Breathe your spirit upon us Breathe your spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us heaven's food and drink, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole, that we may be your body here on earth, loving and caring in the world, until Christ comes again in final victory. Amen. Friends, will you join me in praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the bread of life. And the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you now at your table to um, eat the bread and drink from the cup and to share this with those that you're gathered with today and to share it with us in this time of worship. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the abundance of grace that you continue to just pour out upon us. Your faithfulness in standing with us and by us and calling us to, to come and see 
not only what you are up to, but what we with you, in you, by your grace, by your presence in our lives, what we can be as your disciples and as your followers. We give you thanks for this meal that nourishes our spirits. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Rachel? Beloved God, you know us inside and out, and you still call us to serve you. Lord, honestly, we are often hesitant, afraid, and wish to remain hidden. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Empower us to answer your call with, here I am, Lord. Empower us to follow you when you call us to follow you. Lord of mercy and justice, so many have gone before us working to bring justice and peace to our country and our world. Their footsteps seem too big to step into to continue the work you have called us all to do. So we hesitantly step, one step at a time, bringing your seeds of hope, justice, and peace in a world crying out for them. Lord of hope, we pray for our country, our leaders, and especially our new president as he is inaugurated into leading our country in tumultuous times. We pray for healing of our country, reconciliation, forgiveness, and peace. Lord of peace, we pray for your compassion and healing for those individuals in our congregation who need it. We pray for your comfort and presence for those who are grieving, lonely, and oppressed. We pray for warmth, shelter, clothing, and food for those who are without. Lord, we say to you this day, here we are, your servants, willing to preach your word. Other offer care where care is needed, presence where presence is needed, your love where your love is needed. Lord, strengthen us for our ministry today and every day. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
me up, I get down. And he lifts me up, I get down. And he lifts me up, I get down, 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 down. And an amen. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for being here on this Sunday morning. Friends, um, thank you for being here today. I hope you found our time together uh, to be meaningful. I hope that as the week goes on that you will uh, devote yourself to times of prayer and meditation and reflection on and pondering on the scriptures. Um, read the gospels. Read what Jesus actually had to say uh, for yourself. So this morning uh, we are mindful that tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Day here in the United States of America, and our blessing uh, was first uh, offered as a prayer by Dr. King in 1957. Seems to still be relevant today. Let us pray. God grant that right here in America and all over this world, we will choose the highway, a way in which people live together as sisters and brothers, a way in which the nations of the world will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, a way in which every person will respect the dignity and worth of all people. A way in which every nation will allow justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. The highway in which people will do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. A way in which men will be able to stand up and in the midst of oppression, in the midst of darkness and agony, they will be able to stand there and love their enemies. Bless those persons that curse them. Pray for those individuals that despitefully use them. And this is the way that will bring us once more into that society where we think of all as the brotherhood of humanity. This will be that day when white people, people of color, whether they're brown or whether they are yellow or whether they are black, will join together and stretch out their arms and be able to cry out, Free at last, free at last, great God Almighty, we are free at last. Friends, go in peace to be people of peace, and remember wherever you go, wear your mask. Blessings.